All right, guys, we're back at it again. We got another big job here to get handled in the shop, but I want to talk to you guys about primer because I know there's a lot of controversy. What's better, the epoxy, the urethane with the etch under it? So for the long haul of my career, I've used both products and I've never had an issue with either one. When you use a good quality product, whether it's a good etch and a good urethane or a good epoxy, you're going to have a good quality job. So to me, I do different things based off of what I'm doing. And I'm going to show you that on this here job. So this is a Nissan that we're doing a basically an overall paint job on it here. So you guys can see that the side of this thing is sanded down. It had some chips in it. And we are going to prime the whole vehicle with a urethane on the body of this thing because this had a faded paint job and I want to get a good foundation on it. So we're going to be hitting the body of this thing, the roof and uh, this here side with a urethane on it. So to me, that's the best thing to use on this here to block it out nice because the epoxies do stay a little bit gummy, but we do have a little bit of bare metal here on this fender. So we're going to handle that with a different product and I'll show you guys how I do that. But on this hood here, to me, it makes more sense. This is how the body man brought this over here where it was half stripped because the front edge of this hood had chips in it and uh, he took it down, but he left the back section of this. So to me, it's better off to just go ahead and buzz the rest of this down. That way I can use an epoxy on this here as a wet on wet sealer. And I don't have to waste materials with a urethane and etch and all that time of blocking this. So we're going to get this thing stripped down. I'm going to show you how I'm going to handle this. And then we're going to get that car there primed up as well as the lift gate and show you how I would handle it on a job like this. All right, so we're going to start out with a 180 on the Fest tool and go ahead and get the rest of this thing buzzed down and then refine it up. And then we're going to go ahead and treat it. That way it's ready for the actual paint job. So let's go ahead and get this thing sanded. All right, so we've got it all sanded down now and stripped with the 180 grit. And now I'm gonna move into a 320 and refine up some of the metal scratches on the hood. That way it's a little bit finer before we move into our next step. All right, so you guys can see now that the hood is fully refined. I went ahead and hit it with a 320 grit to refine this down because this is an aluminum hood. So the aluminum is a softer metal than the steel. So when I'm refining these up, I hit it with a 320 grit. Whereas with the steel, usually a 220 is what I use on those. And then I can go right into my sealer for paint. So this now is refined with a 320 grit scratch and we're gonna blow it off. And this is the part that you want to make sure that you have clean air lines if you guys are doing this at the house because when you're blowing off this here hood, you'll be putting oil and moisture from your air lines right on the bare part and that will start the actual corrosion process. So a big deal is having clean air lines and uh, even when I did my cutlass at my house, I didn't do any priming. I took it over to my personal shop where I have an actual refrigerant dryer there because if you trap moisture underneath the primer or you start corrosion, you're going to be fighting it. And that paint job is going to be ruined, not right now, but in about six months, you'll start to see the moisture coming out of it or a stain of rust. So make sure you have clean air lines and uh, get yourself set up right. Otherwise, all the work you do is going to be wasted. So now that we've got this thing all ready, I'm going to blow it off quick and I'm going to hit it now with our pre-treat wipe. And I'll show you what I do with this. That way it's ready for the booth. All right, so first thing you wanna do is make sure you get your gloves on. And we're gonna be using our pre-treat wipe. This here is good for aluminum, galvanized steel, and regular steel as well. So get your gloves on, get this thing blowed off, and uh, now we'll hit it with this. And then once this is on here, this will sit now till tomorrow. But I'm gonna show you what I like to do that way this is all ready to go and uh, it's ready to 
just scuff down before you bring it in the booth and do your final clean and then you'll be able to paint it so this here product is made by rbi and uh, it's a very good wipe to treat the metal especially when you're going to let something sit for maybe overnight because it's very crucial to get this thing treated with something before the uh, elements start to get on it so we're going to just open it up and we're going to go ahead and wipe it All right, so you guys can see it's already doing its trick. See how it's starting to change that metal? And it's starting to look like almost it has a rainbow effect in it. That's this product actually doing what it needs to do to this here metal. So now that this kicks off and it dries, I'll show you what I do. That way this stays uh, prepped out right. All right, so you can see now it's fully dry. It only takes about a minute or two before this stuff dries off. It puts down a thin layer but you can see the definitely the difference in the metal where it was applied and how it looks. So it really does a good job of treating the metal. And now that this thing is ready, I'm going to go ahead and cover this up, bag it up. That way, when this car is ready to go in the booth, all I have to do is unbag this hood, scuff it down lightly, clean it, and then move right into my paint. All right, so you guys see here what I did. I put the plastic down on the stand. Then I put the hood on the stand and now I'm going to wrap it up and I'm going to seal this up tight. That way that this is weather proof, even though it's going to be sitting inside the shop. I want to actually have this uh, vacuum sealed up. That way there's no air getting through it. So we're going to go ahead now and tape up the middle of this thing. And that way this thing can be sit off to the side. And when I'm ready to get this one in the booth, I'll hit this lightly and then this thing's ready to go. All right, so now it is all sealed up tight. Put a little tape on your corners before they rip. Just run a little bit of tape right around the edges. That way when you tighten up that middle, you don't rip this and uh, have a problem with it. So let's go ahead and get the rest of this thing ready. So we've got this here trunk lid and this one here, I'm not gonna strip all the way down. This is not worth stripping. The body man went ahead and hit this with a uh, 180 grit feathered it out to get rid of most of the clear that was actually getting ready to let loose on it. So this one here, we're gonna go ahead and hit with our etch and our urethane, just like we're gonna do the car. But on the hood, it didn't make sense for me to not go ahead, strip it fully and have this thing ready now to go in the booth and save all that time and money as well. So when I'm doing these jobs, I try to do them as if I was doing them for myself and do the right job also think as the owner on material waste because these products are very very expensive and you got to think about that when you're doing these jobs not only doing the job right but you got to do the job which most cost effective and to me spending the extra little bit of time on that hood to strip it down that way we can go right into our wet on wet epoxy sealer is the way to go so this here i want to do more blocking on it that's why we're going to use the urethane. So you want to put down an etch primer on the bare metal stuff. So we're going to go ahead and get the rest of this stuff in the booth. That way we can get this body of this thing primed up because this is a lot of primer. And uh, we're going to go ahead and handle that inside there. So we do have to etch this and I'm going to show you what product I use on it. All right. So we got to get these parts out of the booth. I just finished painting these. These were uh, BMW and then a Tesla that we did. And uh, this one came out nice. So it was a small fender job and then a new cover on it. So let's get this stuff out of the booth. That way we can get that big job in here and get this thing primed up. All right, so now that we have the vehicle in the booth, we're gonna mask it all up. And the body man did a really nice job of refining this vehicle down here. So we don't have to do a lot of sanding. He's got it pretty much all sanded out and scuffed all around the edges of this thing. So all we have to do is basically mask it up, clean it, and then uh, go ahead and get into our primer on it. So we did pull the quarters out and we fully detrimmed the whole car. 
as you guys know that we normally do. We pulled the hood, the rear hatch, and uh, everything is ready to go. So let's go ahead and get this thing wrapped up and then get into our primer. All right, so I'm masking up the jams, and this is one thing that you wanna pay close attention to when you're doing a paint job like this because we're not gonna be spraying the jams on this here job. So you wanna make sure that you keep all the primer out of your jams and you guys see here, I taped it right along the edge of this actual quarter panel. I do not want to have any primer far in on the jam because then you have a chance of not getting enough paint to cover up the primer. So you want to make sure that you mask up your jams nice and tight on this area here, as well as the back side of the doors. You want to keep that close to the edge, tape it along the edge, because even if you have a hard line, once you knock it down, when you're sanding it out, it'll be fine. And you'd much rather deal with that than have an overspray blown in on your jams that you have to smoke in later or something. So on the bottom, I back taped it. So this vehicle has a rocker that was removed and uh, which helps out because we can back tape the bottom of the door and then hang our plastic down. So now that this is done, I'm gonna close the door up and I'm gonna show you a little trick on the edge of the door and the fender that I do to keep the primer out of the jam. On this here, we went ahead and pulled the weather strip off of the window. That way we can get paint down in here and we won't have any bridging with the molding. So I'm gonna run my tape along here and then I'm gonna go ahead and scuff up to my tape. That way I don't blow any of the primer down into this crevice here. And once we paint it, then we'll bring it back towards the glass. That way we get it down inside. So. Let's get this thing bagged up. We've got it fully outlined now. Both sides are done. The jams are taped off. I'm gonna go ahead and bag it. And then we're gonna show you the little trick on this here jam on the fender to the door. All right, so we're fully bagged now. We've got our tailgate ready to go. All we have to do now is final clean this. But when you're taping this up, you wanna make sure that you do not have any gaps in any of your tape, your plastic, or your paper on this because once it blows into those jams when you're not doing the actual jams on it it could be a real pain so i like to hard line everything up here you guys can see there's a hard line i'd much rather have a hard line that i got to sand away than have to worry about having primer blow inside that way i don't have to paint any of this stuff so don't worry about doing any type of fold tape or any kind of foam when you're priming hard line your edges that way you don't have anything blowing inside of the actual jams if you're not doing the jams. If you're doing the jams, you don't have to worry about it as much, but to me, I usually still hard line it. That way I can just hit my line quick and I'm done. So we're gonna show you the little trick that I use. And it's kind of funny that this works so well, but you have to use the cardboard from the actual plastic. So for some reason, this here plastic is a thinner cardboard than most. And I'll tell you what, it's been working for me for years for covering up those holes on the jam. So I'll show you, you just go ahead. This is an old box and you guys see we have our cuts on it from cutting all the uh, plastic through the week here. I'm gonna just go ahead and take a piece of this off of here and show you how nice it'll fill in this gap for the primer so that way it doesn't blow in. Just go ahead and tuck it right inside the actual jam on it. And you guys will see that it'll actually fit right in there nice and it'll alleviate any overspray from blowing inside the jam on this. So this is an old trick that's been around for many years, but you guys can see that it works really good. It's quick and easy. Take your plastic roll, trim off a little bit. We have this in the body shop all the times because we run through this stuff a lot. And then you can pull it up towards the top if you want to, and then hold it with a little bit of tape around the bottom here, and I'll show you that in a second. All right, you guys see it's holding it up there with a little bit of tape, and then the same thing down on the bottom, just run a little bit of tape around it, and that will keep that overspray out of that jam on it. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, and then we're gonna get this thing wiped down so that we can go ahead and get this thing primed up. All right, you guys see it's holding it up there with a little bit of tape, and then the same thing down on the bottom, just run a little bit of tape around it.
All right, so we're fully wiped now and we're ready to get into our primer. So when we're gonna be using an etch primer, I want to use a legit product, which is a two-part. So they do make a one choice in the can, but I like to use a premium product when I'm doing the etch prime. And this is what we're gonna be using here today. This here is the SX1071, which is a one-to-one -one product. And this stuff works on aluminum, steel, and other metals. So we're gonna go ahead and get this mixed up and we're gonna put this on our bare metal areas and then we'll move right into our 2K urethane. All right, so that's the uh, etch primer, and that stuff is a thin primer that will etch to that metal. And if anybody's ever sprayed a true etch primer, you guys will smell, it's very, very strong. So you wanna make sure you have a mask on, and I'm covered up well with that uh, etch because it's very, very strong. It's got a lot of acid in it. So it's a see-through primer, but it treats that metal, and now we can move into our 2K product. So. These products that I'm showing you guys are all under factory warranty through PPG. So they recommend using the epoxy if you want or doing it this way, they still cover it and they will cover the full repair as well as the labor if something was to fail. So these are a recommended PPG way of doing it. And I just wanted to let you guys know you could either do the epoxy or the urethane. So now that this flash is off, we'll go right into our urethane and we're gonna be putting down two nice wet coats of urethane. You guys know I like to get my primer on as flat as possible. That way I don't have to sand away all the primer to make it flat. If you put that primer on lumpy and bumpy, you're gonna take most of it off, whereas the flatter you lay it, you won't have to get it smooth. You could leave a lot on the car. So let's go ahead and get that 2K on it. All right, so that's the 2K primer from uh, PPG there. We went ahead and we mixed in a black and a white. I have both shades to give me a medium gray. That's what I want to use on this one. And you guys can see how nice and flat that that primer laid down. So it's key to getting that primer down nice and flat. That way you do not have to do a lot of blocking to take the peel down. You want to leave as much primer on the car as you can that way you don't have all them breakthroughs because that's what will react to the base coat or the sealer if you're gonna have a reaction is when you have all them breakthroughs. So the flatter you get the primer, the better off you're gonna be and you're gonna have a nicer job sanding the job down. So if you guys wanna see the rest of this here one going through the stages of spraying it, getting it all built back, leave a comment down below that you want me to do this one and then I'll go ahead and shoot this one with you guys We'll get it all built and I'll show it to you guys outside. So give this one a thumbs up. So this is the two primers that I use. You guys know I use the epoxy on a lot of my bare metal stuff when it makes sense. And I also use the urethane with the etch underneath. So they're both a good approved method of using both type of primers. So use what fits you better. There's no right or wrong way when you're using these two premium products. So we'll see you guys on the next one.